Hi artists! This week we are going to be talking about line, shape, and pattern. Your vocabulary for this week, we've got a grand total of five words. Um, a line is a flat path th through space used by artists to control the viewer's eye movement. This can be a mark made by a pencil, pen, or brush. The repetition of lines can be used to create texture, patterns, or gradations of value. A pattern, which is one of the principles of design, is the repetition of elements. So elements are things like lines, shapes, and colors. In an organized way, patterns and visual rhythm are both created with repetition. And then a shape is a two-dimensional or flat area enclosed by a line. And there's two different types of shapes. There are geometric shapes, and these are based on mathematical rules and principles. And there are things like squares and rectangles, uh, circles, parallelograms, triangles, all that good stuff. Those are geometric shapes. And organic shapes are everything else. They have irregular, curvy sides. Um, you are an organic shape. How can lines be used? Well, lines usually are thought of as a way to outline or as a first step in a lot of pieces of artwork. In this example though, lines are doing a lot more work. If you look closely at the different objects in this drawing, you'll notice that the lines are showing us important things like shadow. You can see where the shadows are being created. This artist has just made thicker lines. There's also a use of line to create texture. There's texture on the head of the hammer right here to make it look shiny and like it's metal. There's texture here on the head of the hammer where it looks like it's been indented, right, from use. And then this handle over here also has texture on it. Lines can also be used in other ways. This is a pencil drawing. And it's, everybody always argues with me about this one. I'm gonna call it an apple. We've got a banana and an apple. And the lines on this one are being used to show form or to make these objects look three-dimensional. So if you look really closely at one of the lines on the apple, if you trace your way around, it curves just like the curve of an apple. If you find one of these lines over here on the banana, it curves around just like the shape of a banana. These are called cross contour lines and are a way to show what the form or something actually has three dimensional space. These lines are also used to show value and to show a little bit of texture. So if you follow one of these lines, you'll see that the artist starts by pressing down on their pencil very, very lightly. And as they go around, they start to press harder and harder and harder and harder. And as they come around to the base, where the shadow is, where the dark spot is, they press down harder. And it gives the idea of highlight on the top and shadow on the bottom. So we know that there's a light source somewhere up on top. And we've got the shadows down here. So lines can be used to create texture, to create value, to create form. They can also be used to show space. So this is an abstract um, picture of just a whole bunch of lines. But because the different lines are different thicknesses, it gives the illusion that these, sometimes they hear spaghetti noodles, sometimes they hear worms, that these different lines are creating depth. So the idea that things are layered on top of each other in this image are created because some of these lines are a lot bigger and thicker, they appear closer to us, and then the lines that are thinner and smaller, they appear further away from us. So lines can also be used to create space. So even though lines are relatively simple when it comes to our elements of design, you can do a lot with them. Your first assignment for this week is going to be to create a line library. So on a sheet of paper, I want you to create as many different types of lines as you can imagine. Um, 
You can think about zigzaggy zaggy lines and curvy lines, maybe what a sad line would look like, an excited line, a depressed line, a fancy line, thick lines, thin lines, just go crazy. Um, and try to come up with at least 30 different lines. One thing that I want you guys to keep in mind is a line is a way to get from point A to point B. And so you can make lines like this. That's the line that goes from point A to point B. But if you have a line that loops in on itself or closes, that makes it a shape. And we'll talk about shapes in just a second. So anything from point A to point B, go crazy with it. Now, when it comes to shapes, these enclosed lines, there are two different types, like we saw with our vocabulary words. I like to call geometric shapes math class shapes because these are the shapes that you most often see in your math classes. So you need to find the perimeter of a rectangle or the area of a circle. These shapes all follow rules. So if I were to ask someone from Switzerland and someone from Thailand and a student from Maywood and your grandpa, whatever, um, to draw me a square, everybody would come up with the exact same shape because a square has very specific rules to it, right? It's a four-sided shape. All of the sides are the same length and they all meet at 90 degree angles. So you would be able to come up with what a square looks like no matter where you're from because of those, those rules. Um, you can usually think about geometric shapes as ones that have straight sides, but of course things like circles and ovals also follow rules for your math classes. Um, organic shapes, however, are everything else. You're an organic shape. Uh, clouds are organic shape. Blobs are organic shapes. Uh, leaves are organic shapes. Trees are organic shapes. So if I ask those same people from Switzerland, from Thailand, a student from Maywood, and your grandpa to draw me a leaf shape, you might come up with wildly different things, right? You will have different cultural contexts based on where you live and what you think leaves typically look like. Um, they don't follow the same kinds of rules. Uh, they tend to have curvy sides. They don't have to, but they tend to have curvy and irregular sides. So these are some examples of organic shapes. Patterns, um, our final vocab word. Where do you find patterns every day? Uh, patterns are all over the place, like literally all over the place. Um, a really common place that you can find patterns is in clothing and in textiles. Um, I am not wearing any patterns today. I'm just wearing some solid colors, but um, a lot of my clothes have patterns on them, like check patterns, stripe patterns. Um, a lot of clothes have patterns in them. Think about clothes that you have that have patterns in them because that can be a good source of inspiration for you. Um, you can, of course, hear patterns. You can hear patterns in songs, um, in the chorus, in the beat of music. You can hear patterns in bird songs and how like birds tweet and chirp and stuff. You can hear patterns in poetry and in rhyme schemes. Uh, there are patterns all over the place. You can see patterns in how people plant their gardens, um, like blue flower, purple flower, red flower, blue flower, purple flower, red flower. Patterns are all over the place, especially if you're looking for them. The thing that you need to keep in mind for patterns is in art class, they need to have a repetition of elements. And our elements that we're talking about are line and shape specifically this week, but color is also an important element of design. So think about how you can combine lines, shapes, and colors to create patterns. Because the second part of your assignment is to create some patterns. Here are some examples. I find it really helpful for people to be able to describe patterns using words so that they would be able to continue the pattern on. So these are some examples. Um, the pink and red one, that's actually called argyle. Certain patterns have specific names. There's plaids, there's houndstooth, there's pinstripes, there's argyle. 
Um, and these commonly seen patterns, especially in textiles, have specific names. The chevron up here, these ziggy zaggy lines, it alternates um, a ziggy zaggy line white, ziggy zaggy line white. If we were to continue this pattern all the way down, it would also repeat uh, the rainbow colors that you see. So sometimes patterns have more than one thing that repeats. It's both the line in this one and the colors also repeat. But you would be able to continue that pattern like, oh, I know that it's going to go red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, pink, red, orange, yellow. Then you would be able to continue the pattern from there. Sometimes patterns are simple. Um, this one right here just has kind of these barbell shapes. Um, sometimes people say that they look like medication or something or cell splitting. Uh, these ones, they're just alternating different directions and it's a relatively simple shape, um, but it's just alternating and it's in black and white. The thing that's repeating in this one, black lines. It's a pretty simple pattern right here. And then this one sometimes stumps students because uh, these flowers aren't necessarily in nice, even, consistent rows, but the shape of the flower and the colors that are used in this make it a pattern. So we've got the background with kind of the leafy shapes and the color usage. That's a pattern because that also repeats. So patterns don't necessarily have to be super regimented um, in order for them to still be patterns. So the second part of your assignment, you've got your line library that you need to make with at least 30 different lines. And then you are going to be creating um, your own patterns. Well, three of your own patterns. So you will be taking a sheet of paper. I'm just folding it into thirds. And then in each of those thirds, you will be creating a unique pattern. I suggest using the lines from your line library and any combination of geometric and organic shapes to create your three patterns. But the reason you're making your line library is to make it really easy to come up with patterns that you can have. What you're going to do when you're finished with your line library and with your three pattern pieces, um, you're going to upload a photo of each of those into this week's assignment. Um, verbal instructions and a more complete list of stuff is available under this week's uh, assignment. Email me if you have any questions.